There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Worthy Allah. worship. There's Only no God. Allah. But Allah. There's no God. Greetings and welcome to the channel if you are new. Today's message is Christianity came from the Pharisees. That's right and that's true. Christianity came from the Pharisees. Paul was a Pharisee. and That, that might be news breaking information for those who do not know. But he was a Pharisee. One clue is all it takes to expose the truth. Jesus taught in parables and he uttered secrets that was kept since the foundation of the world. Matthew 13 and 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. He just said all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. Parables. Everything Jesus spoke was a parable. This is your key to understanding the Gospels. Everything was a parable. Now, the Christians, you have no excuse. No. Okay. I heard one person tell me that most of what Jesus said was in parables. No. You don't have the authority to make scripture. Everything Jesus said was in a parable. Okay, let's just establish this right off the bat. Every time Jesus opened his mouth, a parable came out. Verse 35, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Now, there are things that are top secret, and Jesus was speaking parables. You have to think of Samson. Samson was a man who spoke riddles, and when he spoke a riddle, it required deep thought. And if you were wise, you could solve the riddle, but if not, you won't get it. And it requires studying. One of the ancient ways of studying, I believe, is the types and shadows. This is seen in the book of Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, where we have the Solomon concept. Solomon tells us that there is nothing new under the sun, and everything that is has been already. God gives us ways to protect the scriptures and we protect the scriptures with the types and shadows. For instance, Joseph, he was a picture of Christ, a type and a shadow. And we know in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke and John, they paint the narrative that he was crucified. But if we go back to Genesis and we look at the story of Joseph, we see that it was a false murder. And so types and shadows is how God guards the book from corruption. For instance, we have a story where David refused to drink water. His three men risked their lives to bring him water. They broke through the Philistines line to bring him water. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to drink this. I'm going to pour it out because drinking it will be like drinking the blood of the... That condemns communion. That's how you know something is fishy with communion, okay? Because David wasn't drinking no water that represented blood. So why would we be drinking juice or wine in the figure of Jesus' blood? Also, we think about Saul and we think about David. Saul tried to kill David 26 times, but David did not get killed. So if David did not get killed, why would the son of David, P 
peace be upon them both, be murdered. David got away from Saul. And according to the Quran, Jesus got away from Paul. Paul wanted everybody to believe that Jesus was crucified. He was even making the people in Galatia who did not believe in the crucifixion believe in it. Okay, he was saying, who has bewitched you that you should not believe that Jesus Christ was crucified before your very eyes? He was using the tent peg. I call the tent peg the cross. He was using the tent peg, forcing Christianity. Okay, just like jail, taking the tent peg and forcing it through Sisera's temples. Okay, we know that temples represents churches and we know that the Christians are forcing Christianity on everybody. So with this, we just covered how there's secrets in the Bible that Jesus was not letting the Pharisees get that easy. There's secrets in the Bible that he wasn't letting the crowds get that easy. Okay, there's things that are top secret. And we know that God only spoke to Moses plainly. This is going to be Numbers 12 and 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Moses was in another class of prophets. Moses was the only man, according to the Bible, whom God spoke face to face with. Not in parables, not in allegories, not in dark speeches. Jesus, just like all the rest of the prophets, they spoke in parables. They spoke in dark sentences. And it's very hard to grasp what they're saying. So with that being said, we understand that God spoke to Moses face to face. He spoke to him plainly. And Moses gave us the law in a plain fashion. He tells us verbatim, God is not a man. That's why there's going to be a judgment on the Christians who are associating him with man. Moses was like the milk. He was like the baby milk. And he tells us plainly, God is not a man. So you know the judgment. It's coming. He also tells us plainly that the son shall not die for the father's sins and the father shall not die for the son's sins. Every man is going to die according to his own sins. So we know that the Christians have no escape. God gave us Moses. He gave us the milk. He gave us the prophet whom he spoke face to face with to make it easy so that even the children can understand his law. There's no wiggle room. There's no excuse for you. Now what the Christians are doing, and they've been doing this for a long time, courtesy of the nation of Edom. Yes, the nation of Edom is Esau. Okay, the Romans came from Esau. And we know that there is a particular breed of white people who came from Esau. They taught us most of what we know in Christianity. And they taught us to take the parables that Jesus spoke literally. For instance, the Bible says that Jesus said, drink my blood and eat my flesh. Do you really think he meant that literally? No, it was a parable. Also, he told his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they tried to take him literally, just like you. And they said, well, it's because we left the bread. And he said, no. I'm paraphrasing. He goes on to say, beware of the teaching of the Pharisees. Now, let's focus in. Let's zoom in on the leaven of the Pharisees. The leaven of the Pharisees, my friend, is the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from 
the dead. That teaching came from a Pharisee by the name of Paul. Remember, the Sadducees and the Pharisees hung out with one another, okay? The only difference is the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels, but the Pharisees confessed both. They believed in the resurrection, but they had twisted beliefs on the resurrection. And Paul and all of the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they all believed in one man dying for their sins. This is the reason why they kept killing the prophets and killing the prophets. But God said he will send Elijah at the last day. And I know that's going into the spirit of Elijah. And Elijah will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of the sons to the father. Why? Because each one is going to be accountable for their own actions and neither party is going to bear one another's burdens. And we know that the Christians, they teach that one man died for the justification of all mankind, which is false. So we're zooming in on the leaven of the Pharisees and that is the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now let's go to the first time in the Bible, okay, where a person comes back from the dead, the first person who comes back from the dead is a man by the name of Samuel. And a man by the name of Saul was the person who brought him back from the dead. Now let's fast forward to the New Testament. The second time a person comes back from the dead is going into the teaching that Paul gave to the church. He taught us that Jesus Christ came back from the dead. Now let's go to the parable where this is actually seen in the Bible. And remember, parables are not literal, okay? It requires deep thought. This is the first time in the New Testament where it talks about a person coming back from the dead. Let's go to Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. Now, this certain rich man, notice I said, I believe. I believe this is Paul. I believe this is the type and shadow of John the Baptist, the man with all the churches, Paul. He is very rich because although all these churches have Jesus' name on them, all these churches belong to Paul. Not only that, Christianity is the largest religion. Christianity is the richest religion in the world. Home of the teacher and father of the Christian church, Paul. Now, this certain man who was clothed in purple, and notice, it always brings up clothes with Paul because Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, this is a picture of Christ. You have to understand that Paul and Jesus are in a predicament and it's all because of Paul. Now let's keep going. Think of Lazarus real quick. Remember, Jesus rose him from the dead. Okay, he was speaking in a parable. And they didn't get it because he said Lazarus is sleeping. Then he finally just said, you know what? Lazarus is dead. Okay. And he cried for the first time. He wept in the Bible. And he does a miracle where a man was dead for four days, comes back, okay, to life. This man, by the name of Lazarus, is a picture of Christ. He was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with crumbs, which fell from the rich man's table. Now, keep in mind, the rich man is the man with the bread, okay? And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about bread. 
Now think of the first instance where this all came into play. This is going to be in the book of Genesis where Joseph, who is a type and shadow of Jesus, he came into a prison. He didn't do nothing to be there. This is a picture of Christ. And there's two men. One man was a butler. He was a servant. And one man was a baker. Right there in that story, that was a picture of Christ and a picture of Paul. The butler, who was the cupbearer, who was restored back to his original position, was a picture of Christ. But the baker, see, baking things, the bread, the baker, he was hung. Now study your Bible. Saul, even in the Old Testament, his seven sons were hung. All throughout the Bible, we see this metaphor with Saul and his sons going into the fire. This is even stated in the Hadiths where it says God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and they will be your ransom for the fire. Now think about it. They will be your ransom from the fire. Every time you try to kill a righteous man, we killing one of yours. That's how God does this thing. Remember Daniel. Daniel was recompensed. When they threw him in the lion's den, he was safe. But the people who threw him in there, they bones break before they even touched the bottom of the lion's den. Okay? The lions had dinner. Okay? Think of Shadrach, the Meshach, and the Bendigo. These men did nothing. All they did was stand up for the Most High, and they was thrown in the fire, and they were safe. But the people who threw them in there, they were burnt. So this is the law of recompense. Some people call it the law of substitution. It is seen in Proverbs. The Bible tells us that a wicked man is going to be a ransom for the righteous. Now, going on, we see that this leaven of the Pharisees is this teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And right here, going back to Luke, we have this rich man with the bread. And those crumbs that was falling from his table, we know that Lazarus desired to eat those. Now, this is going into some of the things that Paul brought out. It's so significant. Like his revelation of the wife being the church. That right there is one of the main clues you need to be able to understand everything I'm bringing out. Okay, now going back to this rich man, we have Paul and this beggar, we have Christ. Now, let's keep going. Verse 21, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, think about it. The dogs is a picture of the Christian church. OK, they all come from Paul. Paul was the wolf. OK, and what are they doing? They're eating his body and they're drinking his blood. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. So here we have a picture of Abraham, the real Abraham. And then we have the false Abraham, Paul. And then we have Christ. And here we have Paul asking Abraham, hey, send Jesus to help me. I'm paraphrasing. All right. Now let's let's keep going now that you got the gist of it. And it came to pass that. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So this rich man, according to the Bible, is the first person to speak 
of bringing someone back from the dead. You see, that religion we call Christianity is all about someone coming back from the dead. Christianity is actually witchcraft because this is seen in the Old Testament with a man by the name of King Saul who was trying to bring back Samuel from the dead. Okay, King Saul in the Old Testament is exactly the type and shadow of the Saul in the New Testament. They both was with the witches trying to bring somebody back from the dead. That's witchcraft. They both was killing the church, okay? And they both was trying their best to kill David and to kill the son of David. Paul tried his best to kill Jesus, but he couldn't. The only thing Paul could kill was his own church, all right? So going on, he cried, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. To cool my tongue. I went through that. Verse 25. This is what I like. But Abraham said, son, you ain't no father. <laughs> he said, son, look, I'm the real Abraham. Okay. Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Now, if you rewind and go back to Saul in the Old Testament, do you know what it says about him? The first thing it says about him is that he was goodly. Now that word is seldomly used. And we have Abraham saying, remember the good things going on. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. See, this is a picture of the baker and the butler. The butler is going back to his original position. The butler was a servant. We keep telling you all the time that Jesus was a slave of Allah. Peace be upon him. I even brought out how he is the Canaan. He is the servant of servants. And then we have the man who was a baker. Okay, he's been baking cakes for the queen of heaven. <laughs> he has the leaven of the Pharisees. And it is your boy, Paul. He taught that Jesus Christ rose from the dead more than anybody going on. So 26. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. So now we have detailed revelation. This is telling you that when you die, you can't come back. So now when we got these teachings of Paul talking about Jesus Christ rose from the dead, this is completely false. And even in the Quran, it tells us that when you pass over, you cannot come back. Now think about this parable. We have Paul, we have Jesus, and we have Abraham. Why? Why? Because Paul is the false Abraham. Paul is the one that got Jesus in this predicament. And Jesus is going to be rescued. He was already rescued. And he's going to be rescued from them charges. Y'all putting on him. Okay? The Pharisees was accusing Jesus of making himself equal with God. And the Christians are doing the same thing. They are accusing him of being God. Okay, that's why I keep telling you. The Pharisees and the Christians are equally the same. They both are making Jesus out to be God. Now, let's keep going. 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. See, I'm telling you, this rich man is a picture of Paul. Okay, now, you got to learn how to solve the riddle. Why do you think when Samson told a riddle, okay, and his wife told the riddle to her people, he was so pissed off, okay, because, look, God puts the word down here, and he expects you to study it. Ain't nothing going to come to you. 
You're going to have to go and get it. You're going to have to dig deep. And I see right here in this parable that this is a picture of Christ. This is a picture of Paul. And this is a picture of Abraham. This parable explains to us what happens when you die. You can't come back. And Paul is guilty of what his ancestor Saul did, trying his best to bring back a dead prophet. Going on, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. See, this is what Paul was thinking. He was teaching repentance based on the death of Jesus Christ for all people and his death will be justification for them. That is completely against the Bible. That's like north and south. God tells us that every man is going to die for his own sin. Paul teaches that Jesus died for everybody's sin. So he was thinking that if one person come back from the dead, okay, if Jesus rose from the dead, that teaching would make people repent. He's like, no, no, let's hear him. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses, see Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, indicating did nobody raise from the dead. You can't come back from the dead. And he's telling you, look. You Christians went way off. Y'all have flipped the bird to Moses. You didn't receive the most significant prophet we have in our Bible. Don't you realize that Moses is spoken of more than any other prophet in the Quran? Moses gave us the milk. He tells you God is not a man. He tells you can't nobody die for your sin. This is the reason why the song of Moses is the first song to be sung. Okay, that sounded like a tongue twister. This is the man. This is the man. This is the legend. This is Moses. This is the man whom God spoke face to face with. And he tells you plainly God is not a man verbatim. And then he tells you a son cannot die for a father's sin. He tells you every man is going to die for their own sins. Y'all have ignored Moses to go with your perception of John. The book of John is full of parables. You can't take them literally. I'll tell you what you can take literally. Why don't you take Hey D, book 37, 26, edit, narrated by Terramiti. May Allah be pleased with him. The proud will be gathered on the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles in the image of men. They will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Bulas. Now that is the name Paul in the Arabic tongue, submerged in the fire of fires, drinking the drippings of the people of the fire filled with derangement. Now that was Jesus giving us further insight in this parable with the rich man and Lazarus about Paul in hell. Now the prison is called Paul. Keep in mind that in the book of Acts, Paul was always in prison. Paul kept writing letters to his church, to his fellow prisoners, okay? Jesus was giving us insight about this Hadith, about Paul being in a prison with his name on it. Going on. Now we in Matthew 16 and 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So he's telling them to watch out for their false teaching. They're teaching the leaven. What is the leaven? This is going into the teaching that one can come back from the dead. All right. Y'all got to wake up. Y'all got to learn how to study your own Bible. This is going into what Paul teaches. Remember, Paul was a Pharisee and Paul was the son of a Pharisee. And Jesus is telling his disciples to beware 
of that teaching that one is going to come back from the dead. Okay? They were confused. The disciples was taking him literally. They was thinking about the bread. I already brought this out. But then he goes on to say in verse 12, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread. Don't worry about that, the bread. But of the doctrine that's going into the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, Joseph is your main clue. And Joseph was a picture of Jesus. Everything in the life of Joseph, you see in the life of Jesus, from his coat, from his age to the silver. Everything about Jesus is seen in Joseph. Now, the white man teaches this, but he cowers when it comes to the death of Jesus Christ. He's like, no, Jesus was crucified. But if he would follow the pattern that God set up for us, it was a false murder. Read the Quran. Neither did they kill him nor crucify him. For Allah took him. Okay? It was only made to appear to you that way. Okay? Now, you got to understand that God loveth none except those that dwell with wisdom. And there's things that God hides from people who do not seek him. And let's get that in the book of Esdras. In the book of Esdras, we have five men along with Ezra rewriting the law that was burnt. Now, Esdras is actually the Latin name of Ezra. And Ezra had to rewrite all of the law because the law was burnt. This is during the Babylonian captivity. So this is going to be 2 Esdras 14 and 21. For thy law is burnt, therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee, or the work that shall begin. Going on to verse 44. In 40 days they wrote 204 books. Now this is speaking of the five men that were allowed to write scripture with Ezra. Verse 45. And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled, that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. So he said, look, those first books you wrote, okay, I want everybody to see those. Even the people that don't study. Let everybody see it. But watch this in verse 46. But keep the 70 last that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. There's wise books that was hidden, and it was only reserved for the wise men. God loves when you play hide and seek with him. He loves those who search and search and search and search and study. And right here in the house of David, we have been like the man who shot the bow at random and took down the king of Israel. Right here in this house, we made the discovery that Paul is the founder of the Christian church. Now, we know there's many people that figure that out, but we're going into detail. We have the types and shadows in this house, and we have more revelation on who Paul is than any other teacher out there. Okay, you can look it up. You can study, you can look around, and you can find out ain't nobody bringing out this much information, okay? Because if they did, I would be listening. I would be listening. It's a shame when you have to replay yourself, okay, for you to remember what the Most High is bringing out. So with that being said, we must understand that Jesus only spoke in parables. He was uttering secrets that was hidden from the foundation of the world. And the truth of the matter is that from Benjamin came a man by the name of Saul who is still the king of Israel. He's the king of the Christian church. He is the father of the Christian church and Jesus Christ will come back and destroy his church, okay? The secret from the foundation of the world is that Jesus and Paul are opposed to one another, okay? Paul is the enemy of God. And the Bible says 
that Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies. Okay. Jesus was forced into Christianity. He had nothing to do with what Paul was doing after him. Okay. That's why he exposed him and he exposed the Pharisees every chance he can get. So when he said, I am my father is one, he was speaking to Paul. When he said, he that have seen me have seen the father, he was speaking to Paul. When he said, hey, you must honor me like you honor my father, he was speaking to Paul. And finally, when he says, before Abraham was I am, he was not saying he's God almighty. <laughs> okay, dumb, dumb. He was speaking of Paul. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.